Have you ever wanted to play a Star Wars video game inside the Millennium Falcon? You can, and we're gonna tell you all about it today on Annual Pass. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Annual Pass. This is the podcast where we talk about all things theme parks, rides, shows, attractions, snacks. If it happens at a theme park, we're going to talk about it here on Annual Pass. I am your host, Jack Patillo, and of course joining me as always is my lovely, beautiful, and talented co-host, Jeff Ramsey. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello, Jack Patillo. How are you? I am well. I am well. If you're watching us on YouTube, first of all, thank you very much. YouTube.com slash annual pass. We're working on getting more stuff up there pretty soon. We've actually got a slate of content. Jeff, we were in Orlando last week because this is coming out on the 26th of May. Okay. So we did our live show in Orlando, May 19th. How do you uh, think it went? I think it went well. I think it was a lot of fun. We had we Dave had Cobb. Time? Yeah, it was good times. Okay. Uh, and while we were there, uh, we went to some theme parks, or at least I went to some theme parks uh, with, uh, with Ben and Katie and actually Dave Cobb and we did some filming and uh, we're going to be putting together some content for our YouTube channel. So we have a slate of content. Haven't we ready. done that three or four times already? Didn't uh, we just do that in England too? Uh, yeah, we've shot we shot a bunch of stuff in England, but I'm waiting on B-roll whether or not it's actually going to happen. I'm uh, not okay. sure. Gotcha. Uh, anyway, uh, so we've got that. We're, we've got a whole content plan now. We're gonna. It's happening, Jeff. It's happening. Not only that, we're also going to start doing uh, monthly live streams where we do yes. our Q and A's and our like talking to the audience and stuff like that as well. So uh, those will be coming up very soon. I want to say the first one might be in early June. I want to say I'm not. It might be might be next week if you're listening to this live. I'm not 100 percent positive on that. Do you know what I realized? What do you realize? This is uh, one of the one of three podcasts I currently participate in. Yeah, yeah, company. yeah. And I'll, clearly the best and my uh, favorite. Obviously, obviously. absolutely. Uh, There's a lot of shirts. I don't even hear about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the merch is doing well. Uh, we had a cool collab. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't even say the name of the other podcast we collabed with. Hey. Uh, that one's not as family friendly. No. Uh, so I encourage you, if you listen to Annual Pass, don't go out, don't go seeking out the other podcasts. Yeah, Just stay yeah, here. Just stay this here. is a safe space. Stay here. Uh, anyway, I was thinking about it, uh, <laughs> this trip to Florida we just did that uh -huh. we haven't done yet, but that we just that did. we're going to do, but we haven't done yet. Yeah. Uh, we record in advance behind the curtain. If yeah. You know. but, uh, <laughs> and this is, I, I believe, the fourth trip I have taken for annual pass. Yeah. Two to Florida, one to England, and now here. That's right. And then if I'm missing any, but I don't think so. Yeah, we've already uh, taken four so trips. Three, three yeah. Florida. Technically, the England one was an RTUK event, and we just kind of tacked I wouldn't have gone to the event if it weren't for annual pass. Okay. Well, in that So case, it, it was the reason I went. I'm yeah. sorry, RTUK. No, 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 no. I want it. No, it was. Okay. Well, now you've 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 made me a villain. Uh, -huh. uh well, no, I, I, I pointed it was, out that you're a villain. It was the power of the two together yes, that made I the get trip. It. Okay. Okay. So you're saying this is your fourth trip, or fourth trip for annual pass to a theme park. Annual pass comprises 33% of my podcasting but 100% of my travel. Well, I mean, another podcast you just started is brand new. So, I mean, you do travel around for it, just not as far, to yeah, be yeah, fair. Yeah, we just got coffee shops around town. Coffee shops, There's no planes joints. involved. And the other one, uh, you have a, a co-host who isn't, like, going anywhere. So it's going to be a little tricky. Yeah, the, the other podcast I do, I don't want to see those people yeah. in person. But <laughs> which, So it makes sense. I just I thought that was weird. I was like, man, we... I, we all of my travel now is is theme park. Related. I mean, for what it's worth, I wanted Annual Pass to become like a travel podcast, where yeah. it's like we were gonna go travel around, go to theme parks and stuff. We I was assuming COVID was going to die down, and I was assuming there were gonna be hundreds of thousands of people who listen to the podcast. So we're still working on that. Once we get there, then we can start going all over the place. It'll be yeah. lots of fun. But uh, anyway, if you are watching this live right now on YouTube.com/slash Annual Pass, thank you very much. You might notice. Looks a little bit different. That's right. We are on our third. Do you not have headphones? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just realized we've traded our gray and walls with black yeah, curtains for our, gray walls with black curtains. We don't have the whiteboard anymore. We do have some key lights, though. They look yeah. really nice if you want to check it out live. Uh, also, don't forget to follow us on social media. It's uh, twitter.com slash annual underscore pass as well on uh, Instagram as well. Uh, we're also, I'm working on some TikTok content, Jeff. Yeah. I know that's, I sound like the oldest, whitest person by saying that. I'm working on TikTok content. But yeah, I, that's that's coming soon. Yeah, I, ha I got to sit down and show you TikTok the other day. Yeah, you did. You had to, you had to walk <laughs> me through it. And then uh, also join our Discord as well. Link in the description below. And uh, grab a shirt and stuff. Store.roosterteeth.com. So there you go. That's all of the uh, the, the house, not, all house the jibber jabber. 
Yeah, uh, you know, we love doing that stuff. But today's today's episode, Jeff, is going to be a lot of fun. We're talking about a theme, uh, 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 an attraction that you are going to dig. I think you in particular, I, I know you as one of the biggest fans at Rooster Teeth of this of this. Well, uh, now, content. this is either going to be something that I, can, I absolutely adore <laughs> or I cannot stand. We're talking... Star Wars Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, which is the full title of the attraction. Is that the one I went on? Uh, maybe. In maybe. A Disneyland? Yeah, yeah that, actually, you may have yeah, gone on this yeah. one. Where you get to, like, you pilot, pilot the, Millennium, the Millennium Falcon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did that. I did that. I forgot you had done that. That's I did right. it. You went to you went to, uh, to Disneyland, Disneyland right before COVID hit. Right as COVID hit. Yeah. I, to- I totally <laughs> spaced on that. But, yeah, this is one we've both done. We can talk about this That's intelligently. That's very exciting. There you go. This is going to be a lot of But did you enjoy the attraction when you wrote it? Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Do you remember? I, I, the thing I remember the most about it uh-huh. is the other Star Wars ride had just happened. The Rise of the Resistance. Like, Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. And it was impossible to go to. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember my girlfriend had a – we had Fast Passes or – Genies or whatever Genie it's plus, called, probably. Genie Plus, whatever it's Lightning called, lean. and uh, and you would get up, and then it would like open up, and you could like reserve, and there would be it was already gone for the day, like yeah, the second yeah. it opened up. That one, um, when it first opened, you had to do the virtual queues, mm-hmm. and um, like Rimri's Ratatouille attraction out in at, at Epcot, and um, like or even now, Guardians of the Galaxy is opening up. Actually, as a matter of fact, that's uh, the Galactic Rewind, Galactic Re- Cosmic Rewind, Cosmic uh, Galactic Rewind. Very close. That, as a matter of fact, opens tomorrow. <laughs> if you're listening to this live right now, when it comes out on May 27th, um, which we're going to do our darndest to get out to while yeah. we're out in Florida, but de- like literally Dave, Dave, Dave Cobb is reaching out to his Imagineer buddies to mm. see if he can get us on it. So it's like we're, we're trying our, our hardest to get on well, now Cosmic Rewind because I'm, I'm very excited for it. Sad. I, well, it's weird that you're now talking about that in the future tense when you've been talking about this in the past tense for most of the episode. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sad that I wasn't able to attend yeah. this thing yeah. that we haven't done yet that I'm that we're going to do. We're it's going to go very well. But I have, to fly, funny, I have next, to fly home like first thing in the morning. Oddly enough, uh, the next episode we're going to be doing on Annual Pass is going to be Back to the Future. So that feels like that may have been more appropriate to talk about stuff in the past yeah. and also the future. But uh, anyway, so the full name of the, of the attraction is Star Wars Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, which is three pairs of solid, words that, solid yeah, title but though, I don't shorten care. down to I'm smugglers run if you're yeah. a smugglers run you know what you're talking about this is in the batsu the black spire outpost area of uh disneyland and also uh disney's hollywood studios in florida this is the brand new star if you hear it's star wars area star wars land that's what batu is that's the black spire and, outpost. and what did it replace uh, in Hollywood Studios, it replaced the Backlot Tour, uh, Lights, Motors, Action, and kind of the general back corner of the park, okay. uh, including like Residential Street and a bunch of other things. A bunch of stuff got leveled. Up. That Toy Story Land in Hollywood's in uh, in uh, in Black Spire Outpost both really just ate up the back left corner of the Hollywood Studios park. Hmm. Um, in Disneyland, I, I forget exactly what it replaced, but it's kind of back behind Fantasyland, over by Big Thunder Mountain, kind of in that corner. Yeah. Again, back left. Uh, I don't know Disneyland history as much as I know the studios um, but yeah so it's it's been replaced there like you said uh, Rise of the Resistance is the other attraction that opened up in the uh, in, in the Black Spire Outpost it opened up a while after the entire land opened up so initially when Black Spire Outpost opened it was only Smuggler's Run. That mm. was the only ride you could go on. There's also the Cantina. Uh, there is the uh, the lightsaber building area. Mm-hmm. There is the droid building area. A lot of shops in there, um, and the and like not not a lot of restaurants. There's a quick service restaurant where they have the um, the pod racing engine. But other than that, there's not a lot of food there. You know what I just remembered? What's that? When I was there. Uh, so this would have been February of 2020. 2020. February yeah. 2020. Like right as. The world exploded. <laughs> uh, it was also when, like the I haven't I haven't watched the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched one second of the Mandalorian, so I know it's not Yoda, but I'll call it Baby Yoda because that's what everybody called it. Grogu, the, but Grogu, yeah, the child, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that hit. It didn't have a name yet. Yeah. And everybody in Star Wars Land or in Baku, Batu, Batu was. Uh, was just walking around going, where can I buy a Baby Yoda? Can I buy a Baby Yoda? And they're like, uh. And then at, like, at some point in the day, a dude wheeled out a cart that had like <laughs> 20 Baby Yoda stuffed animals, and they sold those, and then the dude wheeled it away, and that was it. And But it was like a fervor yeah, yeah. through the entire place. Like You could feel people's like uh, agitation and unease running around trying to get that, that Baby Yoda. It, it is so interesting that that was Mandalorian Episode 1 is where they introduced the the Baby Yoda. Yeah. I think Episode 2 is where you got to see it, like actually see it. Um, 
it, I feel like Dave Filoni and John Favreau just didn't bother telling Disney that this was going to be a thing because <laughs> it, it, like like you said, it feels like that was out. It was almost they the entire first prepared. season was out, and there it was, was clearly almost unprepared. nothing. Yeah. And now, I mean, you can't you can't throw a rock without hitting yeah. a Baby Yoda in you know anywhere in Disney World. It's like Baby Yoda is out there now around the world like Dora was in the <laughs> early two thousands. Yeah, it, but it, it is very strange that it's like it feels like something like anyone in merchandise or marketing would be like, well, that is our next big thing. Yeah. And just they missed it. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing because it was kind of like it built up a fervor and actually kind of add the scarcity to it to make it feel a little bit more exciting. But, um, but yeah, it's, it is, it's a weird miss for Disney, which um, I don't know. Maybe things got distracted at the time, but who knows? But uh, yeah, now there's now we're on Mandalorian season three. We got we got Boba Fett show. We got an Obi Wan show coming out pretty soon. I think, as a matter of fact, it might be coming out next week if you're if you're listening to this live. Man, I am so far behind on my Star Wars and Marvel fandom. I don't know that I'll ever catch up or try to. Yeah, so, uh, Star Wars, they're, they're starting to really fill out the galaxy, which yeah. uh, hopefully they're, they're starting. Well, I, w- I was saying they're starting to get away from the whole Skywalker thing, but then they just rolled him right into Mandalorian, too. But anyway, uh, I like the Han Solo movie. Yeah, Han Solo. That was a su- Solo was a surprisingly good movie. Really good film. I really liked it a lot. And yeah. I was really excited to see Amelia Clark and I wanted to see what was going to happen with her. And then it was like, oh, we're not going to do any more. And it was yeah. like, I, do, I wasn't ex- I wasn't excited for that movie. And I saw it. I really, Same. really liked it. Same. So, yeah. Anyway, I think we're talking Star Wars stuff. This is good. This actually is it, it's fitting for the podcast today. Uh, D23. Do you know what D23 is, Jeff? Uh, I feel like I do. It's uh, Is it some sort of an, ev- uh, an event? Mm-hmm. It's basically like a Disney kind of big showcase where okay. they talk about a lot of cool things coming to the parks. It's, uh, it's like their, it's like their uh, Apple event? Kind of, their yeah, yeah, yeah. E3 sort, kind of, sort of like that. Yeah. I want to say they do two every year. Uh, D3 in 2015, it was announced that Star Wars uh, was coming to the parks. So this is when they announced that Batu and Black Spire Outpost was coming to the parks. Lots of concept art and people were getting very excited for it. At Disney's D23 Expo on July 15th, 2017, a presentation uncovered additional details about the attraction story talking about the uh, smugglers run artwork depicted Chewbacca and Hondo Okana or Anaka Hondo Onaka outside of the Millennium Falcon and it was revealed that an agreement between the two will lead to a crew being needed for an as yet unknown endeavor when you when you mispronounce that mm-hmm. do you think somewhere in Austin uh the hairs <laughs> on the back of Blaine's neck stood up and he was like, absolutely Ugh. We, we've talked about Hondo before. So Hondo is kind of the main, uh, sort of the driving force of the attraction. He's the one that sort of narrates what you're doing. Yeah. I thought he was made for the ride. Totally wrong. He was actually made for uh, Rebels and uh, another show, uh, uh, Star- Clone Wars. Clone Wars. His, his, Hondo Onaka is the leader of the Weak Way Pirates of Florum, who appears in Star Wars, <laughs> the Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels. Sounds like Gavin's name in this stuff. Florum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Hondo, still active during the events of the sequel trilogy, has made an effort to go straight and establish an honest business in the form of Onaka Transport Solutions. Is that right? Yeah, Onaka Transport Solutions. Though this is a primarily a front for his smuggling operations. Oh, that cheeky, cheeky. Hondo, uh, partnering with an old acquaintance and fellow smuggler Chewbacca, Hondo has secured the use of the Millennium Falcon and sends crews of spacers out to onto various missions across the galaxy while operating out of the Black Spire spaceport on Batu. Um, so that is sort of the the plot of the attraction. Is like he's like, hey, I need you to go pick up some stuff for me. Don't worry about it. And of course, Star Wars happens. The, so yeah, Star Wars happens. You end up doing all the things. Uh, let's see. When you least expect it, Star Wars happens. <laughs> Uh, the attraction opened on May 31st, 2019 in Disneyland. So you, you rode pretty shortly after it opened. And August yeah. 29th, uh, 2019 in Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida. It is also, I want to say they're opening it up in Japan as well. I don't know when. Uh, so the story is set between the films of The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. So it was the last two of the final trilogy, supposedly. Okay. It kind of fits in between those, those two. So it's canonically in the middle of there. Uh, Would you... Well, I don't want to get off on. A, I don't want to get distracted. That's uh, all right. Are we, are we talking movies? I did, are you? Would you consider yourself still as big of a fan of Star Wars uh, as you've been your whole life? Has your has your like has it waxed and waned? Yeah, it's definitely waxed and waned. Like, there's bits and pieces of it where I'm like, oh, I get really excited for it, and then it's kind of like, ah, I'm not a huge fan of that, and it's kind of. I never really dove into the big extended universe stuff yeah. and the whole, like, cl- like the animated stuff, Clone Wars. Rebels. You didn't read, I, like, the Timothy Zahn novels? No, or... which I think those aren't even canon anymore. Yeah. 
Um, I never really got into that kind of extended universe stuff. I love the movies. Yeah. And I've been a big fan. I, I like what they're doing with uh, with The Mandalorian, where they're kind of taking it down and sort of telling a single story again, as opposed yeah. to, you know, the traditional Star Wars thing where it's like, here's three groups of people. They all scatter, they do their bit, and they all come back together at the end. Like, that's the, the Star Wars, you know, narrative structure. Mm-hmm. I like that they're trying some different stuff now, especially with the shows. They can flesh out things. I'm really excited for Obi Wan. Yeah, seeing Ewan McGregor come back, and uh, I'm very curious because Hayden Christensen is also coming back as Darth Vader. Which how I I mean he's always wearing the mask, right? But yeah, that is interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what they're going to do with S that. So you uh you still consume all the content, all, all the. the I guess theatrically or television release uh, most of it. I don't yeah. I, I haven't done the cartoons really. I mean, okay. I did the original Clone Wars yeah, back so in the day. like the, the yeah. one like the Dave Filoni uh like, like the, the very first one. Yeah, it was like yeah. eight and they're all different styles. Like that one that Mace Windu one where he was just fighting that giant mm -hmm. army, so awesome. Uh but other than that, I haven't really watched any of the series. It's a it's a weird property for me because you know, I was born in 75. So I uh, Star Wars was my childhood wheelhouse. It mm -hmm. was like Star Wars I as an early 80s kid, it was Star Wars and ET and Poltergeist and The Goonies and uh I don't know, f f there was a bunch of other stuff. But uh and and I would say it was probably like my most solid fandom. Okay. And I think that would be the case for a lot of kids my age. Yeah, yeah. The late, late Gen Xers. Yeah. And, but it's weird. It's like that fandom for me still exists in that period in time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everything since then has been different. Yeah. I mean, it's of, I don't know how to explain it. I don't, and I don't begrudge it at all. I was very, very, very excited when the, the second trilogy came out. And, you know, Gus and I camped out for two days <laughs> to sit, to get tickets and the whole thing. Uh, but then I saw this interview with George uh, Lucas years and years and years ago on The Daily Show where people were, you know, bashing Jar Jar. And he said, you know, it's not, Jar Jar's not for you. Jar Jar yeah, is for yeah, yeah. today's kids. Yeah, yeah. And that's what The Clone Wars is for. Not and for I'm, you 30 I'm, year not, olds. You know, I gave you guys movies. I gave you guys a, a trilogy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, this is the Next Generation's trilogy. And I feel like they've gone through that cycle maybe four times now. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know, I really appreciate it, but I do find that like I don't feel a connection to the new Star Wars content, uh, but I still feel just as strong of a connection and love and fandom and pull for the franchise, I guess because of my... my experience in it growing up in the originals. Yeah. Uh, it's weird, I, like I don't begrudge anything new, but I just don't find it super I, like i don't go out of my way to watch it either. yeah I, I will say it feels like the the newer like the the most recent trilogy the abrams trilogy yeah uh, with uh you know a little snippet of which uh, i watched with, with ryan in the middle yeah um I, I i mean it felt like those were kind of all over the place it, fe <laughs> yeah. it, it felt like <laughs> yeah there were there was no sort of like i mean i i know they had initial sort of idea where the first movie was going to be uh, it was going to be uh, uh, Han's movie, Han Solo's movie. The second movie was going to be more about Leia. And then the third movie was going to be about Luke. Hmm. Um, and then, unfortunately, Carrie Fisher passed away yeah. midway through the second movie. So that may have tweaked some things. But it felt like they were doing some really interesting, weird stuff with Last Jedi. And I like that a lot. Like, I, I like tweaking things and kind of like, you know, seeing different parts of the of the universe that we've never seen before. Yeah. But there was a large portion of the fans that just did not like that. And then I felt like they over course corrected back the other way mm. with the last movie. And it was just kind of like, Oh, okay. And it was just, I wanted to see some interesting stuff. Like everything is Skywalker. I, I don't, I don't care about Skywalker anymore. Get away. And it's like, Oh, Hey, she's also tied into the main villain. And like this here's Skywalker. And it's like, ah, oh, God, give me something different. But for the record, I will say, uh, because I, I, I want it to sound like I'm being negative towards Star Wars in any yeah, way yeah. whatsoever. I, I, I have a tremendous affection for it and, I, and it hasn't been tainted at all. Uh, but I will say, I think Ray is the best character in the history of the Star Wars. She's universe. pretty cool. I like, like her a lot. She is so well, presented and acted uh i just she was a delight every time she was on camera and uh i, I was uh, so i i guess i still identify with in some yeah. capacity but do me a favor and go and watch the mandalorian okay i think you'll like that it's if you're three in, seasons though uh, watch how the, many episodes of the season uh, i want to say it's like eight eight to twelve maybe okay. um watch the first season and if, if you buy into it i'm very curious because the, the first season reminded me so much more of the original trilogy and that feel yeah that kind of dirty almost western feel yeah as opposed to the more kind of clean, polished versions of the new movies and stuff. And I, I'm very curious to see what you think about it. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try at some point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Uh, we're, Sorry, I didn't mean to take us off. That, on a that's whole all right. We're talking tangent. Star Wars, man. It's yeah. gonna be a lot of fun. So it's just I think about Star Wars a lot and how I I don't know it's just about my place <laughs> in the Star Wars universe. I guess throughout my well, life. I mean, there's a, there's there should be a place for everyone though, like yeah. kind of within it. You can find your spot. So getting back to the attraction, this one is a little bit different. So okay. this is a motion simulator, mm -hmm. which you know you think motion sims, you think Star Tours, you think Back to the Future, you think The Simpsons, but it's different because this one you actually do control. And uh, believe it or not, if you've ever ridden the attraction, you you are sitting in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, and uh, you you have you have two pilots, you have two gunners, you have two engineers. The two pilots are controlling the movement of the vehicle. So the the pilot on the left, he actually can, or they control left and right. The pilot on the right controls up and down. Um, the one on the left controls the brakes. The one on the right controls the hyperdrive as well. Hmm. Um, but if you wanted to slam that thing all the way up the whole time, that's what the attraction you're going to get. That's that's where you're going to get that ride the whole time. <laughs> if you have two pilots who are really good, you're going to have a very smooth ride. It's yeah. actually not going to be bumpy at all. And so um, what I love about this attraction is it's essentially a video game. It's, yeah. And you can get better and better. And there are different outcomes and different things will happen based on how well you do in the attraction. Do you Which, know? How, I don't know that if, if that exists anywhere else on the planet right now. Do you know how many there are? Uh, how many there the are? Different all, outcomes. Uh, well, so when I say or different variations. outcomes, uh, like there's a couple things throughout the attraction. Uh, Hondo sends you off to get uh, uh, not Corellium. Is what's it called? It's the uh, Coaxium. That's it. Okay. Oh, Coaxium. Yeah. Oh, you should have done this. <laughs> so Hondo sends you to find Coaxium, which we established in Last Jedi is essentially space gas. Mm. And uh, so you have to go get it to help the resistance. So he sends you off, go find some Coaxium. And in the attraction, uh, you there's one, you're, there's one you're gonna get no matter what. So like as you're going through, you end up shooting this thing and collecting some, and it's very, it's, it's highly explosive. Mm. And then you have an opportunity opportunity to stop a train and get another one. But if you if you if everyone lines up well and does it right and the pilots are uh, flying correctly, you can get a second one. But if you don't, you're just not going to get it. Really? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, and but uh, there's rumors. It's disputed whether or not there's actually a third one you can get if you're doing perfectly. Um, I've heard both ways. Uh, supposedly, some cast members have said that yes, it is a thing you can do. Some have said no, it is not a thing you can do. I've I've tried watching videos. I haven't seen anyone successfully get a third one. But who knows? There's also some cool Easter eggs we'll talk about uh, after we go through the ride. Uh, and what else? So, uh, yeah, again, the, the attraction has six positions, um, two pilots, two gunners, and two engineers. And uh, it's fun because there's actually lights and stuff you have to hit throughout the ride. And if you do better, you get more points, which are credits, essentially. Hondo will pay you more based on how well you keep the Millennium Falcon up, if you don't mm. wreck it, if you don't hurt it, um, if you get more more coaxium and everything like that. And, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Instead of a traditional ride film, this is from Wikipedia, I think. Instead of a traditional ride film, the Millennium Falcon ride was developed by ILM Experience Lab as a real-time rendered experience in partnership with NVIDIA and Epic Games. The ride film runs on the Unreal Engine, which is powered by a group of eight NVIDIA Quattro P6000 GPUs. I don't know what that is. With five Quadro Sync projectors <laughs> offering high-resolution pictures. They could just be making up names. <laughs> we wouldn't know. True, true. Quadro sync. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's there's why I wrote it. So uh, coaxium. Yeah. They, so, they, they both sound about as plausible. <laughs> so the attraction has you on a mission from Hondo to obtain some coaxium containers to help the resistance in the ride uh, in the pre-show as you're walking into. And uh, there is an A1000 audio animatronic figure of Hondo, which it is the second most, at least at the time, was the second most elaborate audio animatronic that existed in the park. Do you know what the first one is, Jeff? Uh, I feel think like I... Think blue. Uh, think blue. Oh, it's Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues. That's not right. It is the Navi Shaman from the Avatar Journey. Oh, I haven't uh, seen Navi that Navi River yet. Journey. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that. Uh, that one's really cool. It's this giant uh, shaman, and she's, like, moving around, and it's surreal. It looks like an actual, per like an actual na a Navi, I guess. Have you seen the, like the trailer for the new... I have. Yeah, yeah. Way, uh, Way of Water. Yeah, I haven't seen it. How is it? It looks like a sequel. I mean, it's it's blue, blue. Now they have green ones too. They have green avatars. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it's there's very very little to be told. Are they gonna like add a color a movie type thing? I guess so. And there's a, there's a little human running around too. We uh, can make sixteen films in this franchise before the crayon boxes. Do you empty. know they're making five more? They have scheduled. Yeah. Th there's gonna be an avatar it's, movie one one movie for the next two years. For five of them. They will be making Avatar and Transformers films until I die. <laughs> Dude, Optimus Prime, Optimus Prime Lego comes out in June. Oh, really? Yeah, like old school Optimus Prime. I was at Target the other day and I was looking at, they have a, 
the Seinfeld set. Mm -hmm. They have the Friends set. Who would want that? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I, I really love how uh, how out there they're getting. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. It's pretty pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so um, it, the the attraction is really cool though. So it is it's a motion simulator. You know, like where you kind of like you go up, down, left, right, move, and it, it follows along with the video, so it mm. feels like you're flying. You are piloting the Millennium Falcon, and not only that, as you go into the attraction, you get to go inside the Millennium Falcon. You get to see like the chessboard where you know Chewbacca threatens to rip off C three PO's arms. You can sit down and take photos inside. Like they actually give you time to sort of like prep and kind of hang out in the Millennium Falcon before you go on the attraction. Yeah, I will say, um, just going through my my memory uh, of this of having this ride, I don't remember much of. It's quieter in here, Jeff. What was that? Oh, is that what it was that construction? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't remember much of the rot. I don't remember much of the ride. At <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this stays in the episode or not, but it's really funny. Uh, is that you think I'll get picked up, Mike? Okay. All right. Uh, listen, we're uh, you as you know, we are in a temporary space. We're in a temp. We're in a new temporary <laughs> space. Then uh, I think in the last three episodes, we've recorded in three different places. Uh, if you count us recording at home for one, uh, just because there's a lot of construction going on because we're trying to improve our facilities, uh, and that takes time and drills. It, it takes yeah. time and very loud drills. Uh, but I, the thing that I remember most about this ride is just. Honestly, the weight of seeing the scale of the millenn the actual Millennium yeah. Falcon in front of me, getting to walk, to do a 360 around it, and then getting to get up on it and see that chessboard and walk around and just touch and feel like I'm physically in. Like, that part was... I, 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 I remember enjoying the ride, yeah. but that part meant way more. Yeah, I, I remember uh, Kevin Smith, love him or hate him, doesn't matter to me, uh, when they were making... The Force Awakens when they were making the the new movie. Yeah, J.J. Uh, Abrams actually built a full scale Millennium Falcon that they shot on, uh, and Kevin Smith went to visit him at some point when they're during filming, and he said walking up the platform because they built it out on the inside. He said walking up the platform into the Millennium Falcon, he just started crying. I bet because yeah. it's just like it's something you see and now it's tangible in front of you, like that. It's it's so surreal and seeing it in person is like that. Like the actual attraction itself, it's. I mean, outside of it is parked the Millennium Falcon, full scale Millennium Falcon, right in front of you. And like you said, in the queue, you actually walk back and forth a couple times, and you look on top of it, and it's all built out. I mean, it's everything. It's it's smoking, it's steaming, it's got lights on it. Yeah. And uh, and then getting to go inside of it, that is so surreal. And I wonder what the feeling must. I, I'd let, uh, there are probably multiple interviews that answer this question. I just need to look for them. But I wonder what it was like for Harrison Ford to step back on that thing for the first time. And oh, man. It's. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Years. Like that's the kind of stuff that I really dug about the first one. It was definitely a nostalgic if he, factor. If but. you walk through and he's like, "That's not supposed to be there. That's over <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Where, where's that stick of gum I put up?" Uh, so anyway, the the queue is the queue is fantastic. We'll talk a little bit more about that and uh, the in the fun facts. So there are some fun facts about that. Okay. that I didn't realize until I was researching this one. Uh, but Jeff, are you ready to go with me and ride on Star Wars Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run? At Hollywood Studios, we'll do well, the one that in Florida. It just rolls off the tongue. Huh? Just rolls yeah, right I'm, off I'm all about right it. Off the tongue. I've never, been, I haven't been to the one in Florida, so this would be a new experience well, for me. I mean, it's very, very, very similar from totally the inside. new they experience. Just, they just hit Control C, Control V when they, <laughs> when they built this. Control one. C in California, Control V in Florida. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Are you ready, Jeff? You yes. Ready? Right, here we go. I did some voice work this morning. My throat's already hurting. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Jeff. Hey yeah. Jeff! Yeah, man. Jeff, wow, this this room echoes. We're we're a much larger room than we have yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, we're, go, we're go, moving up in the world, Jack. Jeff, we're at Hollywood Studios. I love Let's it. Let's go to Star Wars Land. We're in Batu, Jeff. It's I can't believe it. Black Spire Outpost, Jeff. Let's go to the back of the Black Spire Outpost. Jeff, it's the Millennium Falcon. It's just right here in it's, front of us, Jeff. It's so big. Let's. <laughs> Are there any gonk droids around? Can we like kick one of them over or something? Let's, oh, look, uh, it's, it's Ray and Chewbacca. They're walking around. When they walk around and then they're gone, let's steal this thing. That's <laughs> okay, Jeff. Let's let's go ride Smuggler's Run. It'll be lots of fun. Okay. Okay, let's do okay, it. Okay, okay. We're going through the queue. We went through the queue. Jeff, look at Hondo. <laughs> it's Hondo. He's talking to us. He's the guy from the Clone Wars and Rebels. Yeah, he definitely wasn't created for this ride. No, not at all. No. Everyone knows that Jeff. Everybody. This guy's been around for a long time. He's telling us he has a mission for. Oh, he's talking to Chewbacca, Jeff. He's in there like they're buddies. He's like, hey, hey, che Chewie, can I borrow the Millennium Falcon for a ride? These people, I need them to go steal some stuff for him and not steal borrow some things and Chewbacca's like whatever he does the noise he makes I can't do the Chewbacca there, noise you, you, your Hondo <laughs> and your Chewbacca are both 
uh, on point today. <laughs> All right, Jeff, we're going into the Millennium Falcon. Jeff, look, it's we're inside the Millennium Falcon. It's like I'm freaking out right now. It's Jeff. pretty cool. There's the chessboard, the, the, the things, the little like the yeah, 40 the, chess the, or whatever. They smack people and stuff. Jeff, let's take some photos inside. Click, click, click. We're taking photos. Like, yeah, look at us. We're on the. Okay, Jeff, it's time for us to go. We got we got to get in the pilot seat. Are you ready, Jeff? Yes, I'm ready. All right, Jeff, do you want to be? Do you want to be a pilot? Do you want to be a gunner, an engineer? What do you want to do? Uh, I want to be an engineer. Okay, you be an engineer. I'm gonna be a pilot. Okay. I'm gonna fly this thing. All right, this hunk of junk. All right, Jeff. Okay, we're sitting down. Okay, we gotta activate all the control panels and everything. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so we're, uh, everything's getting. Up. Whoa! Look in front of us, Jeff. You can see it like we're in a hangar. And Jeff, we're we're going up. Uh, and Hondo's like, okay, go go get that coaxium, everybody. And it's like, oh man, we're flying, Jeff. I'm controlling. We're flying around. Wee! Oh, I, I bumped into something. Sorry about that's that, Jeff. That's insane. But we're flying over the Black Spire outpost. Uh, I, I may have clipped a ship on the way out. That's that's okay. Not it's getting a, our perfect score. I, well, you're an engineer. Just make sure to repair this thing. Yeah, all right? yeah. I'm gonna hit the repair button. All right, the gunners are firing too. That's lots of fun. Okay, Jeff, let's, it's time to get out of here. All right, let's let's, let's go. Do it. We gotta go. Kick, kick it in the hyperdrive. Whoa, we we went we in a hyperdrive. We've got plaid, Jeff. We've got uh. plaid. <laughs> all right, Jeff. I think is this Corellia? This is like one of the big planets. Okay, Jeff. We gotta we gotta steal the thing. I mean, uh, borrow the thing. Jeff, this tie fighters. Oh, they I, shoot the TIE Fighters down, Jeff! I feel like this is the opening scene from episode two. It, uh, maybe, I guess. We're flying around and, uh, look, there's a train full of the coaxium, Jeff. We gotta get one of the things off the, the train. We gotta, we gotta grab one, Jeff. Let's get it. All right, good. Jeff, okay, the engineers, they have to hook onto the train. So they've got it. Now we, we're gonna shoot it off. Oh, we bumped into it! Oh, no, we bumped into it, Jeff. That's not good. There goes our S rating. Oh, no, we're like the Millennium Falcon's having a bad time. But we're hooked in. Oh, that's pulling us down, Jeff! We're following! <laughs> Oh, ow. Okay, we're okay. We, But we've got... That was some smooth, dri oh, yeah. smooth driving, Jack. It's, it's good. Okay, Jeff, we got one of the canisters. We're going to put it on the ship. Ooh. So we, we look at little things. Got to pick it up for us. Whee! Okay, we got one of them. Jeff, but Hondo's like, wait, you can get another one. So now we're going to chase down. We got to fight all these TIE fighters. Might as well. And we got to catch the train. And we're going to we're gonna try to knock off the, the thing again. We're going to get another one of the... the Do you think we can do it, Jeff? I think... Uh, yes, I believe. All right, my piloting's gotten pretty good. We got to stay right behind it. If we stay right behind it and keep firing at it, we can knock the thing off and collect it and we get two of them. Would you say this is hard to do? This is pretty difficult. This thing, it doesn't handle very oh, well. Oh, 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 Jeff, oh. we got a second one. Then we got it. We got a second one. We knocked it off and we collected the second one. Good job, everybody. All right, now we're going to get out of here. We're just firing. There's all of these TIE fighters flying around. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here and get back to the Batu with our yeah, coaxium, uh, Jeff. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. All the coaxium in the world doesn't mean anything if we die here, Jack. All right, Jeff, I'm going to take us back out to space. Boom, we're going to hyperspeed. Whee! <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what that's what they say, right? Yeah, when yeah, get, exactly. When uh, Chewbacca says, "Wee!" All right, uh, Jeff, we're flying back. Oh, oh sorry, I clipped it. something. Uh, the black spot. Uh, I clipped the thing on Batsu. We're flying. Okay. All right, Chewbacca is gonna take us in now. They say Chewbacca is gonna take control, and we're gonna fly back in, and we're gonna uh, land right exactly where we took off. That was a very quick trip, Jeff. That was a quick trip. But hey, we got two two things of coaxium that's worth a whole lot of money. And Hondo's like, "Hey, good job, everybody. You get to take some of your credits." Um, but you don't actually. It doesn't. It's like crypto. It doesn't actually count for anything. <laughs> it's, oh. not, it's, uh -oh. it's not real money. So, all right, look, you can see all the gunners. You see how many, how many, how many ships you shot down. Jeff, three, thirty-five percent accuracy. How, how'd you do as the engineer back there? I got a hundred percent engineering skill. Nice, good yeah. job. All right, well, Hondo says, all right, get out of here. Uh, I got things, I got places to go and people to see. So we're gonna get out of here, Jeff. Jeff, we did it. We've survived the Millennium Falcon, and Chewie's like, Brah! and uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the bright side, we're thieves now. We are thieves. Yeah, we're we're stealers. We're, we are smugglers, Jeff. That's the, that's the much cooler way of saying. Yeah, it. But yeah. we did it, Jeff. We're done. Whew. That was lots of fun. So, uh, more morally questionable, but the outcome yeah. was was a unmitigated success. So. I got some fun facts for us, Jeff. Okay, about the attraction. Uh, so, Hondo, do you have any idea who does the voice of Hondo? You might, he has kind of uh, a familiar Bruce, uh, voice. Uh, 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 John Wayne. <laughs> we see Bruce Willis. Is that what you want to go for? Yeah, I was going to say Bruce Willis. No, no, not John Wayne. It's Jim Cummings. Do you know who Jim's, Jim Cummings is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but why don't you tell the audience? Uh, he's they voiced don't. Winnie the Pooh and about the a Pooh. billion other voices All the as other well. Voices, name one more. Uh, he did. He was uh, Monterey Jack in uh, in Ducktales, I think. Exactly. <laughs> I think that, that was his that name, was right? the one I was going to go with too. Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings voice. Uh, well, he, we know he did see. Hondo. Uh, uh, he did Tigger as he well. Did Tigger. Uh, he's done one of the hyenas. Uh, he oh, he did he did the Wiley e. Coyote as well. Why did you Dark circle Wing. the Tasmanian Devil and say Wiley e. Coyote? Oh, that's Tasmanian Devil, not Wiley e. Coyote. Uh, he did. Uh, he was Darkwing Duck, which is kind of cool. Oh, uh, I was a big Darkwing Duck fan. Man, that's pretty cool. So anyway, he's done a ton of voices, 
and uh, including this one. So that's pretty rad. Uh, let's see here. Uh, originally, guests were going to have complete control over the Falcon's path. So you're actually going to be able to fly it around. It was going to actually be like an actual game. Um, Disney eventually changed it uh, over fears that certain guests would intentionally crash in seconds to ruin the experience <laughs> for other guests. Um, yeah, I could imagine yeah, that. Good call. If, yeah. you gave, if you gave me full, like, you just gave me the keys mm-hmm. to the Falcon, it's going to be like, oh, this ain't going to go very well. Yep. Uh, so now it's, it's, it's on, it's on, unra- like on rails, but, you know, there's still a lot of movement to it. So it's a lot of fun. Um, there's also an extra scene that a lot of people don't know about really as you're going if they're having issues loading because the whole the whole thing is basically on this turntable where you get inside and as you're going it's actually rolling you around Mm -hmm. towards the exit and so when you finish you're at the exit and you can just walk off um but if if necessary if they need more time like they're having issues loading another one and they just need to stall for time they can add on an additional scene that once you leave Corellia um, you end up at an asteroid field and you're fighting more TIE fighters oh yeah so uh, like it, it, sometimes you'll just miss it sometimes you'll just blast and go right back to Batu sometimes you'll end up in the asteroid field so it's a little bonus thing so that's if you really get cool. that you know keep it on that's that's kind of cool and uh, also one really neat thing so I mentioned the turntable as you're walking in to the Millennium Falcon. As you get into the cockpit, uh, they make you stand on kind of like some like some spots on the floor. It's like pilot, left pilot, right pilot, you know, engineer to make it easier when you load in. Like you walk in and it's like, okay, you go to the left, you go to the right. And so there's these things on the floor. When they spin you around to exit, obviously you don't need those anymore. But to keep with the theming, they actually have recreated those on the floor. So really? even though you'll, ne- you'll never use them, you walk back over them again to make it feel like you're going out the same way you came in. That's really cool. Which is really clever. And yeah. I, actually, too, as you're leaving, the uh, the Falcon has a bunch of kind of like battle damage to it on that side. So like as you, you walk down the same hallway you came in, except the door to sort of that middle area is now closed and you go through a different door, which takes you to an exit. So it's really neat how they do that. It's like simple theming, but it's Brilliant. like, man, you don't, you don't think about like, oh, we got to put the, the, the foot spots on the other side, too, to make it yeah. feel like it's, it's consistent. So that's really, really cool. Um, it, uh, so, like I mentioned before, it is disputed whether or not there's actually a third canister of coaxium you can pick up. If you know, please let us know in the comments over at Rooster Teeth. I'd love to know. If you scored 99999 on this. <laughs> also, uh, if the ride crashes, again, because it's a computer, yeah. if the ride goes down, like the like the screens don't work. You get a blue screen of death. Yeah, they actually have, so the, the screen will go dark. It'll just go pitch black. But they have videos of Hondo saying like, what have you done to my ship? And it's like, oh, Chewie's got to fix this whole thing. And then they'll walk in. They'll be like, oh, hey, we got to we gotta repair this thing. And they'll take you back out. That's great. And then let you redo it again. But they literally have have like videos prepped in case it breaks down which is super super cool um yeah and so uh from blogmickey.com this is kind of cool there is a chewbacca mode on the ride do you know what do you think a chewbacca mode is jeff i would imagine it would just be everything in in chewbacca's language that's exactly that so in the in the ride hondo is kind of narrating what you're doing throughout the whole thing there is a chewbacca mode where if you do certain things you can trigger where it's just chewbacca the whole time yelling at you <laughs> and he, he can you kind of hear like, him getting angry or happy but it's literally there's no no english it's all yeah, it's, it's all, all in, in wookies or whatever it is uh so if you want to do this if you if, i'm curious you need six people or at least six people who understand what chewbacca mode is here's what you have to do to do Chewbacca mode. Again, this is blogmickey.com. Do not activate your positions right away as you'd normally do. So when you get in, it's usually like flashing a button, you hit it and it activates the position. Don't do that immediately, okay? Left and right pilots need to push their controls to the extreme left or right or up or down, depending on which way your controller moves. So the one on the left, it goes left and right. The one on the right, it goes up and down. So push it all the way all the way to the top. Does it matter? Can it go all the way to the bottom? Yeah, no, either way. Okay, it just okay. has to be on an extreme. Okay. Uh, after that, the pilots hit the activation button. So you hold it all the way up, hit your activation button. Uh, engineers and gunners need to hit... Like while it's being held up? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like control alt delete. You got to hit, gotcha, you gotta hit gotcha, all at the same yeah. time. Engineers and gunners need to hit one of the white buttons on the respective consoles before hitting the activation button. Hold the white button, white button then press activate. So... There's a panel of buttons. Hold one that's lit white, and then I think it's a green button activates it. So hold the white one, hit the green one. Uh, ensure all of this is done before the cast member checks your seat belts and hits their own confirmation button. So basically, a cast member walks through, makes sure you're buckled in, then they hit go. So make sure you do it before they hit go. So all mm. six of you have to do it before then. That's it. If everyone did it correctly, you should hear Chewbacca's voice during the entire ride instead of Hondo Onaka's voice. So as you start, you'll hear Chewie basically make his, his chewy roar, and then you'll know you've got it, and then you ride the whole thing as chewy. If you've ever done Chewbacca mode, let us know in the in the comments below. And also, supposedly there's a lot of other hidden stuff in the ride because it's a game and they can just program stuff in mm. that a lot of people don't know about yet. 
So, um, yeah, and sense. also one of the neat things too is since it is you know a video game essentially, um, they can replace the ride film anytime they want. They can change it to other things. And supposedly they are working on two other films that will be coming as the ride kind of gets stale. I mean, it's been around for two, almost three years now at this point. That's very so, cool. Yeah, they can just add in new things. I mean, like Star Tours, they added in different areas you can go to. But I love the idea of like, okay, like get on. And I wonder if there'll be a thing where like you can pick which area you want to go to. Mm. Like, you know, or if Hondo just kind of picks one for you. Like, it would be kind of neat though if you like pick your destination. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. It's, yeah, it's a neat sure. little thing. Uh, one other thing, the, the queue of the attraction is really, really neat because you walk through... It's it's a really dirty kind of like uh, you know ship bay. It's it's Hondo's you know workshop. So there's tons of you know broken down droids and ships and things being worked on. And there's one big ship that's that's constantly being worked on throughout the whole thing. And you hear someone talking, and it's like two guys yelling back and forth at each other. Like I think I got it this time. Like uh oh, well everyone watch out. And then it's you know whatever. Mm -hmm. That's actually Ben Schwartz from uh, oh really yeah yeah you know he's uh, John Ralphio and Parks and Rec. He's yeah, Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog. Uh, yeah, and so he's done a lot of stuff. He actually did the voice of um, of BB-8. He was one of the two guys that did the voice of BB-8 in the uh, in Force Awakens, and I think he he was the only one who did it in uh, in Last Jedi and on uh, and and uh, what was the last one? The Skywalker Saga. No, Rise of Skywalker. So um, yeah. It. Yeah, and so uh, he he did those. So he did that. Also, uh, the other person he's talking to is Bobby Moynihan from really? SNL. Yeah, I didn't know that. I I I, I was pretty sure it was Ben Schwartz. That's kind of like kind of like the old Conan Andy Richter uh, Easter eggs in Halo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and funny. so that's kind of cool. Uh, and yeah, also uh, th uh, those two guys represent two thirds of the triplets and Ducktales. The new <laughs> ones they're doing the voice. So I don't know if they're Huey, Dewey, or Louie or which one. But uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Smuggler's Run is a really really cool attraction. Um, to me, this is kind of the future of these kinds of attractions. I mm. love the idea of putting putting control in the guest hands in some sort of fashion that yeah. you could have a different outcome, different experience based on how well you treat the attraction and ride. And um, yeah, and I would like to see more of that kind of stuff. So I, I hopefully we'll get more things like that. Like, can you think of any other rides that would make sense to have something like that? I mean, like in my head, I'm thinking I know they've talked about doing a broom, uh, like a broomstick ride for Harry Potter World. That'd be very cool. Which uh, supposedly might be coming with Epic Universe. Um, a, a Tron attraction would be pretty cool. I mean, I could see it applying to literally anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. I would love to see it. Uh, I just mentioned it, but I'd love to see a Halo ride someday. That'd be, that'd where be really you cool. you can have different outcomes based on how, how well you play the. It ride. is a little shocking. There is no Halo attraction, really. Yeah. I think there might be some sort of like shooting gallery type thing, but uh, yeah, like as far as it feels like an enormous franchise yeah. that hasn't been touched. There's a, a lot of video game stuff. Really, Super Nintendo World is kind of the first foray into video game stuff to mm -hmm. a real extent by Universal. So maybe we'll see more of that. It, it seems like, you know, Microsoft will cut a deal with someone and be like, let's make a Microsoft land. And feels like there should be an Uncharted ride Uncharted, already. Gears right? of War. Gears of War would be huge. Like there, there's so many things. I mean, like after riding the stuff we did out, out in Thorpe Park with like the Saw ride, the idea of like a Gears of War roller coaster. Yeah. would be awesome. Or like Dead by Daylight even. Like there's so oh, yeah. many interesting cool properties out there. Yeah. Or like a Dead no. by Daylight or even like a uh, what, what's the other one? De not Dead by Dawn. Um, uh, what, what's the four v one horror game that we play all the Evolve. time? Evolve. Uh, <laughs> that was one of them. No, uh, uh, the one with like the the guy with the chainsaw, the nurse. Um, Dead by Daylight. Is it Dead by Daylight? Isn't it? Or, or I, or maybe, is that, maybe it's Dead by Daylight. That sounds right. I'm thinking I'm thinking Seven Days to Die and getting Dead by Daylight mixed up in my head. Anyway, like it would be fun to do that. Like how, how come that hasn't popped up as like a Halloween Horror Nights house yet? Right. That Absolutely. feels like 100 percent something that would pop up like that. So. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And now, um, you know, we're not doing Q&A anymore in the episodes. We're saving those for our live streams, which I believe we're doing one in June. Uh, so check out check out that. I'm still going through all of the episodes, though, and pulling questions that we'll be answering during our live streams. Uh, but I will still ask a question of you, the audience, that we will then talk about all of the answers we have during our live stream. And my question for you for this episode is, who would be your perfect lineup for the Millennium Falcon? Who would you take with you to ride along Smuggler's Run? So you've got five other people. You don't have to fill all five. But if you want to be like, hey, who's going to be your pilots? Who's going to be your, your gunners? Who's going to be your engineers? I want to know what is your dream lineup for Smuggler's Run? Jeff, do you have any idea who you would want to take with you on Smuggler's Run? Uh, I'm taking I'm taking Billy D. Williams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I would take Billy D. Williams. Absolutely. Yeah. I would take uh, you know who I'd take? I take Robert Redford in Butch Casting the Sundance Kid. I take <laughs> okay. the Sundance Kid because he's great when he moves. He shoots and true, moves. Shoots true. and moves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I take Captain Picard. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he's great. Grace under pressure. Yeah. 
not, uh, not 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 Patrick Stewart, but actually Picard. Picard himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Okay, okay, yeah. I think it'd be fun. I, I would like to take uh, the the young- Agatha Christie. <laughs> I think she would add a calming presence. No, not Agatha Christie. Miss Marple. Okay. Like, yeah, like Miss Marple herself. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was a nice lady, and then uh, she would keep us on track. And then if uh, there were any shenanigans, she would get up. To, she would also solve any issues we yeah. had. Yeah. Would you? I would take Billy D. Williams and Donald Glover. Donald Glover and Bennett Bennett. <laughs> I would take Don Rickles. <laughs> just just to keep just to just keep, to keep the, us on our toes. Just to just keep the slaps that go in the whole just time. Just in case we get too full of ourselves, he could knock us down. Uh, all right, for all of you 12 year olds out there, go ahead and Google Don Rickles and watch some old Johnny uh, Carson. Uh, yeah. Or maybe, maybe. Don't, or maybe don't. Maybe don't. But uh, yeah, so let us know in uh, over on roosterteeth.com who would be your perfect lineup for the Millennium Falcon ride. Think of who you would want to bring with you and ride Smuggler's Run with. And uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll we'll go through some of those answers on our live stream we've got coming up, I think, in June. So, mm-hmm. um, but that'll be do that'll do it for this week. It's been a lot of fun. Um, don't forget to grab some merchandise over store.roosterteeth.com. We've got some cool shirts, got our pin set as well. We've got some stickers over there, which I have. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got one on the back of my laptop. I love it a whole lot. I want to see. It's really cool. Oh, that is nice. They're big too. Yeah. They're big stickers. They're great. Um, Join our Discord as well. We've got the uh, Rope Drop Running Club h- h- hanging out over there. We're training. We're, we're currently we're doing a, a virtual challenge, Jeff. We're we're in a fellowship running through Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so like as we train, you add miles to this this virtual run. And so there's 11 of us running through the Shire right now together. Oh, that's awesome. It's really really cool. Uh, yeah, we got the we got the the marathon weekend coming up in January. We got a lot of fun stuff planned. That's my last one. I'd bring Samwise Ganji. He'd, he'd be the last person I'd fill out the group with. Gamji or Ganji? Ganji. Okay. <laughs> the knockoff version of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, and uh, make sure to follow us over on social media. We're annual underscore pass on Twitter and Insta- Instagram, and uh, and yeah, and, 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 and you know youtubecom slash annual pass, of course. So you can see all of the the fun stuff. Um, oh yeah, Jeff. Before we get out of here, we've got some mail. I want to go through. We have received some postcards, Jeff. Oh, that's fi- finally. Yeah, we got we got some postcards. We're gonna go through that. And we also got a letter here uh, from Brian uh, Brian R. It says to Jeff and Jack, thank you for uh, thank you for. Wait, Thank you for Achievement Hunter, the awesome work on Annual Pass, uh, making my commute all the much better and reminding me how much I love theme parks. Here are a few pins just for you guys from Brian. And uh, they sent over pins. These are awesome, Jeff. So these, you know, we have our pins over at store.roosterteeth.com. But these are really, really cool, including a great movie ride pin. Oh, that's awesome. Which I didn't know existed. I'm very pumped for that. We've got a Phantom Manor pin, which is the uh, the French version of the... the haunted, that's or, very the, uh, cool. The, uh, of the Haunted Mansion. You, you got there. And also the World of Color from Disney's California Adventure, which is the, the nighttime show over there. Uh-huh. So very cool. Thank you very much for that, Brian. I appreciate that. And Jeff, we got some postcards. Who we got postcards from? Well, we got a postcard here uh, from Jessa and Kara. Uh, who sent us one uh, from St. Augustine, uh, which is, I used to live near St. Augustine nice. when I was a kid. That's we in Florida. vacation there sometimes. And uh, it's a bunch of alligators. Ooh, And alligator uh, they're very excited to see us at the Orlando show, so I'm excited uh, to see them too. I guess we already did, and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I got a letter here from uh, Spencer. It says, hey, Jack and Jeff, I love your content. I've been a fan of Achievement Hunter since Fails of the Week episode 10. Your enthusiasm for theme parks reignited mine, and I inspired me to work on a 3D, 3D prints of a model roller coaster, even though I'd never used any of the tools needed to do it before. An idea to make something neat. I could send y'all as a thanks for all that you do. Thanks for the content, Spencer. And, uh, they they actually 3D printed like a roller coaster like oh, track. Oh wow! And it says annual pass on it too. That's awesome. And uh, not only that, but they also sent us a postcard pack from <laughs> Universal Orlando. It's kind of, I guess, the spirit of it. But uh, yeah. now, now we have some blank postcards from Universal Orlando Dude, that we'll hang you on to. 3D print your own roller coaster track. That's uh, it. Doesn't get much cooler than that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty rad. So neat. So thank you very much for that, Spencer. Appreciate yeah. you. What, what else you got there? And then over here, I have uh, <laughs> Orion from uh, Kings Island. Ooh. It is a uh, an aggressive thrill level, according to this thing. <laughs> uh, hey, Jack and Jeff, this comes to you from Kings Island in uh, Mason, Ohio, and they are having their 50th anniversary this year. You got to check it out. Oh, I would love to do that. Congrats on one year. Uh, this is from Megan. Oh, thank you so much, Megan. And this is a cool. Like, oh, it's one of those lenticular ones. Also, uh, yeah, it's lenticular. Also, it uh, has a, a Star Trek uh, oh, yeah. stamp on the well, back of it, which I appreciate. Stamp. And then uh, it, this looks like one of the scariest <laughs> rides ever. And I'm terrified that I'll have to 
step foot on it someday. Nice. And our last one here, uh, we actually have. This is so appropriate. Yeah. It's, it's from Black Spire Outpost. Uh, this is sent to us from Jesse James. Uh, it says Jack and Jeff absolutely love the podcast. My friend Patrick listen. Or my my friend Patrick and I listen every week. This card is from Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios. I'm a massive Star Wars fan and love these postcards. I'm from New Jersey. Would love to hear a podcast about King to Ka and Great Adventure in Jersey. Keep up the great work, Jesse James from Atlanta, Georgia. What what is different the odds Jesse of that? James? Different, probably. I imagine. I went to the Jesse James's uh, supposed <laughs> supposed uh, grave one time. So. Oh, oh, so that's even a different Jesse James. Yeah. So there you go. If you want to send us a postcard, please do so. At some point, we're gonna have a little set that we're gonna have some postcards behind us. And we'll add yours too. We're gonna save all of these and add them to the the final wall. It's annual pass care of Rooster Teeth Productions, nineteen oh one East fifty first Street, Austin, Texas seven eight seven two three. So that's gonna do it for today. Jeff, do you feel like you learned anything today? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that Hondo I, Onaka. My Jim, yeah, he's canon. And, Jim, he, and he's Jim been Cummings. around for a while. Yeah. Jay, I learned uh, Jim Cummings is exactly who I thought he was. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you caught up. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. So thank you, everyone, watching over at YouTube.com slash Annual Pass. We love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Make sure to watch our live stream where we do our Q&As and everything. That's coming up soon. More information on our, our social media accounts. So love you all. Take care. Stay safe. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.